Thanks for making time for AM Business. It's brought to you by Ecobank, the Pan-African Bank. Today, George Riafi speaks to former finance minister Seth Tepe on government's engagement with China and how to deal with economic superpowers. Both debates, if you follow the international media right now, about African countries should be careful about China. We understand even some senators in the U.S. have issued a letter to Secretary of State and all the rest about uh, the fact that uh, the support coming from China to other countries in the world would end up hurting the economies rather than uh, helping them. For you, what should be our approach? You dealt to the Chinese as well. In Ghana as a country dealing with China. Um, well, thank you very much. China is a source of funds. And if I'm not mistaken, whether it is still the case, uh, CDB, for example, that's China Development Bank and China Exim together now give out loans, not just to African countries, to Asian, you know, um, some Middle Eastern and other, <coughs> you know, economies, uh, far in excess of what even the World Bank or African Development Bank, you know, would give, you know, uh, in total to these countries. So it's a source of funds. And um, in the matter of geopolitics, I think it's important for us also as Africans to <clears throat> listen to the concerns, you know, that are being expressed by others because we are going to relate to them. We are going to relate to the U.S., we are going to relate to the EU, we are going to relate to, you know, other geopolitical positions, the multilateral institutions. And the U.S. is a powerful voice on both the World Bank and the IMF, <clears throat> you know, they carry you know, a heavy vote. And so I think that we should also be in listening mode. But above all, I think, you know, Africa, particularly the middle income or emerging countries in Africa, and this is a theme, you know, I have been addressing, uh, should also begin to evolve processes and procedures and institutions that are above board so that we come from a position of strength particularly where we have our natural resources and we have other mechanisms for which, which we can use to set up market tools, mm -hmm. like buyback, sinking fund, and the rest. Uh, so that borrowing from one multilateral or bilateral does not become the only um, source available to us. Uh, so I think what I'm saying is that um, listen, but also begin to build your own institution systems and processes that would enable you be a more effective market player. What should be the the Ghana strategy? When I read the letter yesterday, I was like, wow, the U.S. are taking these concerns a little bit far. We engage the U.S. a lot. They even have a military cooperation and all those things with us. Uh, how should Ghana as a country deal with this situation, i.e., whether we should take the infrastructure loan from China or not, whilst you are even under a fund program? Um, George, I believe that you are familiar with the strategies which, you know, um, <clears throat> that President Mahama we were putting, you know, together and not to sound partisan, you know, but uh, some of these are being upheld and, and continuing. So I think we should build our own institutions so that, for example, if you have an infrastructure fund, I remember, you know, there's a, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Fund, the U.S. is thinking about an infrastructure you know, bank or, bank or fund, whether it should be on a U.S. exim, as you have with KFW. Um, you have the European Investment Bank and the rest. Uh, there's talk about development bank. I think that what we need to do in Ghana is to have uh, a robust, you know, development or long-term, you know, um, financial arrangement, not just for government, but for the private sector. I mean, if you want to refurbish the studio, you don't go for a three to five year loan from a commercial bank. I think we should distinguish that from, you know, short term loans which are bridging finance or to do, you know, simple renovations. For a major rehabilitation or reconstruction, mm -hmm. you need long term loan. You need, you know, 10 to five years. Mm -hmm. And this is what is lacking in many countries. Uh, so with the opportunity of Tenfield, with the opportunity of Sankofa, with the opportunity of additional revenues, I think we should strengthen you know, um, the building of institutions, a capital market for one in Ghana, you know, which is a real capital market long term, uh, with long term bonds, 10 to 15 years, 20, 25. Uh, we should 
you know, set up as I said, uh, well, we should strengthen the, the sinking fund, we should strengthen the infrastructure fund, mm -hmm. which we can then leverage, you know, to go to the markets and borrow mm -hmm. at very good yields, such that, you know, then borrowing from China, from US or others, you know, becomes one, you know, a, a very important one at that, but, mm -hmm. you know, we begin to diversify our approach. So I think ultimately it depends on we also growing up and getting out of the situation where, you know, we move from one multilateral or one bilateral, you know, to the other. And that's what we should do. <clears throat> and that's what we should do. And that is what I attempted to do, you know, with the smart borrowing and other, you know, initiatives, which, are, by the way, other countries are doing. Yes. Do you, do you, from your engagement with China as a country, do you think that the other, the West, is being fair on their criticisms? And the fact that be careful with the Chinese, or you think that listen, any country that gives you money is out to promote its own. You just be tactful and should just be strategic. Well, I dealt with China for a very long time, and I think a number of points are very important. Maybe two or three. First, um, you don't view China as a political communist you know, left government when you deal with financial matters. Institutions like CDB, Exim, are very, very, very professional. And we must always remember that those institutions are on the capital markets themselves. And so they know what it means to be on the capital markets. Second, let's not forget that China is westernized to a large extent, and China has become, you know, the second largest economy in the world. So you cannot also do away with China and its influence in many respects. And by the way, China is a member of the IMF. You know it. One of the vice presidents, you know, uh, deputy MDs in the fund is a Chinese, and they have occupied that position. You know, so, and the renminbi, has just been made a convertible currency. Uh, and so I'm saying that China is emerging. So we shouldn't view China in some ideological or, you know, when we are dealing with uh, financial matters. We should deal with them professionally. And that means, and that's this my other point, we should also build capacity. So that when you are negotiating, not just with, the, with China, <laughs> with the World Bank or any of those institutions, you also negotiate professionally and from a position of strength. Or indeed, when you are going to issue bonds, you know, as you have witnessed, uh, you do a roadshow and you have your facts, you build institutions and you convince the markets. So I think that we, the, we should be looking at building capacity in developing, you know, now middle income, you know, let's leave our middle income status, you know, by building or strengthening our processes and, and our institutions so that we are able to deal irrespective of who we are talking to. But I think the, the position being taken by the U.S. Is, a, is an important one, but we should be also mindful of other U.S. positions because, you know, the U.S. is also moving to strengthen institutions, as I said, like Exim Bank. And that may provide an opportunity for us because what we are seeing is also, you know, geopolitics, you know, which may, you know, come with uh, some awakening, you know, and more you know, um, development finance, as Angela, uh, uh, Vice Chancellor Merkel, and I am, and uh, before him, uh, uh, <clears throat> the French, you know, and other have been promising Africa. Um, the British uh, Prime Minister, Theresa May. I think we should look at these opportunities that are coming in that geopolitical context. But to repeat, you know, it doesn't matter who you are dealing with. You build your institutions, build capacity, so that you'll be able to deal with them on some position of strength. But I was asking that then, in all these things that you enumerated, France, there's Germany, uh, <coughs> there's UK, there's US, how should a country like, a, a small fly like Ghana, position ourselves so that we cream part of everything and then we don't isolate ourselves depending on how we engage in all these partners? Well, it, it means that we should not just tie ourselves to you know, one, you know, um, source of, of financing. But you'll be able to do that only if you have sound macro fundamentals. 
and you have some market tools, right? And this economy see that, you know, you have um, a certain strengths and advantages. Um, as the saying goes, small is beautiful, um, if you get it right. Because if we say that we are not, you know, a Nigeria or a South Africa in terms of sheer population or size, land mass, it also means that perhaps we can do more with 200,000 barrels or 250,000 barrels of crude oil when we get there than Nigeria can do, you know, or because of their complexity with maybe 1.5, you know, million, you know, barrels per day. So it is up to us to make sure that we have a diversified approach to the use of oil resources, as we are tempted to do, a savings element, an investment element, a stabilization element, that's very key, you know, because often we are brought to our knees and we go back to these institutions, you know, which is a question of winning ourselves of IMF or whatever. The text comes when commodity prices fall and whether you are able to really win yourself. That's when winning becomes, winning yourself, you know, becomes, you know, um, real and meaningful. Uh, because when the economy is going down and you do not have the forex and your, you know, city is sliding, you are forced to the only institution that provides developing countries with balance of payment support, and that is IMF. So, so <laughs> what I'm saying is that we have the opportunity, you know, with the additional flows that we are we are seeing now to begin to build institutions that would stabilize the economy. Under your tenure as minister, you engaged the Chinese with some facilities and other. One of them was the CDB as well. How come we didn't realize all these loans there from the Chinese government? As I said, the Chinese are, are smart. You know, they, 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 and I mean smart in that sense, right? So uh, remember, remember that when, um, when you face the Chinese technically, <laughs> it's not just the World Bank or the IMF that's concerned about your debt to GDP ratio. They are also looking at those things. Many people don't get that, right? And so, and it makes a difference between whether they will give you three billion, 1.5 billion, or one billion, short of giving them some natural resources, which is what people think they are known for. But what prompts them to go for those natural resources and the rest is because they know that if all the money goes into the kitty, right, they are not protected because maybe your debt ratio is high, maybe your debt service ratio in particular is high, and you are at risk of debt, uh, debt default. And I just said that the <laughs> deputy MD, you know, the IMF is there. You know, and they have the IMF, you know, staff, you know, the fund, you know, especially the executive director's offices and whatever. So we should not think that, you know, they are necessarily anti-IMF in all cases, no. Yeah. So, um, yeah, in short, George, the, 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 the fact is that we should, um, we should begin to strengthen our capacity as Africa.